Hi, it's Liz Needham. Let's have a look at independent events. So independent events are things that do not affect or aren't affected by another event. So if I'm tossing a coin multiple times, then each time I toss the coin, it's not affected by the result I got in the previous toss. Okay, so that's what it means to be independent. If it's dependent, that means that the probability changes if I know whether or not something else has happened. So an example of this, if I've got a mixed bag of chocolate, then the probability of getting a blue chocolate changes every time somebody else takes a chocolate out of this bag. So every time the chocolate is removed, my probability of getting a blue changes. Therefore, this would be a dependent situation. It's not independent. So there's a couple of rules that we can use, and depending on what information we've been given in a question, we'll determine which rule we use. So the first rule is that the probability of some event is the same as the chance of that event given some condition. So what that's saying is it doesn't. we don't care whether or not something else has happened, knowledge of that something else has happened doesn't change the probability. The other option um, rule we can use is whether the intersection is equal to the probabilities individually being multiplied. So these are our two rules to check and they are on your formula sheet. So let's look at some examples. So we've got the probability the student takes art is 0 0.15, the chance they take design is 0.15 and the chance they take both art and design, so that's our intersection, is 0.083. So that's my three key pieces of information. We've got the individual ones, probabilities, and we've got an intersection. So that tells us we need to use our second rule. So let's substitute the numbers in and see whether this rule is true or not. So therefore whether the events are independent or not. So probability of A is 0.15, probability of D is 0.15, and the probability of A intersection D is 0.083. So I now need to check does 0.15 0.15 times 0.15 is that equal to 0.083? And the answer is no, it's not. So because that is not equal to, that means that these events are not independent. So the chance that somebody takes art compared to somebody taking design, they aren't independent. So somebody might be more or less likely to take both subjects if they take one. Let's have a look at a different example. So this is looking at students who take sport versus studying chemistry. And we want to know are these events independent? So the first thing I need to do is add my totals in. So columns have to add up, rows have to add up. Then there are th uh, three different ways that I can check this. So if, if I use my intersection rule first, what I want to do is I want to first look for the intersection between sports and chemistry. So I've got 16 students out of the 166 who take sports and chemistry. Then I want to look for the probability of doing sports. So the probability of doing sports, well there's 87 students that do sports out of the 166. And to find probability of chemistry, well there are 42 students out of the 166 that take chemistry. So I want to find out do these two things equal? Does the left hand side equal the right hand side or not? So at this point it's easier for me to convert them into decimals because I prefer to convert, compare decimal values. So 16 over 166 is 0.01964 and the other side is 0.1326. So we can see that these side, the left hand side does not equal the right hand side which means the events taking chemistry and playing sports is not independent people may be more or less likely to take chemistry knowing that they take sport and vice versa. I could however use the a second rule. So our other rule is about conditional probability. So the probability of sports is that affected by knowing whether or not somebody takes chemistry. So if the probability of sports is equal to the chance of sports given chemistry then they're independent. So let's find the probability of taking sports. Well, there are 87 out of 166. Now let's find the probability of taking sports given 
that somebody takes chemistry. So we know we've got 16 students out of the 42 students who take um, sports and chemistry from those that are doing chemistry. So let's convert those to decimals and we find that those values are not the same. Therefore again it confirms that studying sports and chemistry are not independent. Now with this conditional rule you could actually do it the other way around. So if the opposite was true, so is the probability of taking chemistry equal to the chance of doing chemistry given that you take sports? So it doesn't matter which way around, you should come up with the same determination of whether they're independent. The working is different, but the decision you make should be the same. So the probability of chemistry, 42 out of 166. Probability of chemistry given sports, 16 out of 87. Convert those into decimals and we find that no, those decimals are not equal. Therefore, the events are not independent. Thanks very much for watching.